My name's Ryan and you're watching That Random Geeky Guy. So, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're starting a video in a way we've never done before, which is actually with an unboxing. So, let's move over to a drop-down camera and see what's going on inside here. Okay, so, we start with your typical Amazon packaging. Now, I'm not naive, the title for this is, uh, is definitely going to give away the video a little bit, so uh, let's, uh, let's get it open nonetheless. So I noticed uh, a video on another channel recently uh, where they were talking about using a second display, a small display, um, as basically a stats monitor for your computer. So I thought to myself, that's really cool. And actually, I think a lot of people from the build community would think the same. So I thought, OK, what's the easiest way to achieve that? And that's where this comes in. Okay, so this is actually, as you saw, the first time me opening this. I've not done one of those kind of open and reseals. Uh, so what I'm seeing first is what you guys are seeing first as well. So let's uh, let's get into this. So we've got a, a bit of bubble wrap, and I believe that's going to be the main party piece that's in here, all nicely wrapped up. Okay, we've got what appears to be um, a mini HDMI to a full-size HDMI questionable, questionable screwdriver, uh, a micro B to USB-A cable, what appears to be some, that's quite strange, okay, so that appears to be some heat sinks, some little mini heat sinks with some 3M pads on the back, interesting. Uh, we've got a little assembly manual, and then in the bottom, We've got a load of pieces of what I assume will be acrylic. So you can see they're all packaged up in here, multiple little bits and pieces, so on and so forth, uh, which appear to be, they're not 3D printed, they appear to be um, like CNC cut uh, from large sheets of acrylic. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get this box out of the way and move back to this piece here. So, if it's what I hope it's gonna be, Let's uh, get the trusted knife out and uh, get a bit more into this. This is going to be a really small LCD display. So it should be a five inch display. Now, essentially, it's a five inch display normally designed for use with um, something like a Raspberry Pi. Um, but its input method is quite simply HDMI. So nice and easy to use. It's coming in a, a little anti-static bag. Um, and I wanted to kind of explore, shall we say, the most cost-effective way of getting this kind of second stat display thing done. Um, and I believe that this is gonna be it. So let's see what we've got in here. Okay, so you will find a lot of these screens that are available. So there we go. One tiny little display. PCB there on the back. And then up here in the top, we've got multiple ports across the top. Uh, you've got your HDMI and you've got two micro B ports as well as a power socket. Uh, and what appears to be like a headphone jack here. So I'm assuming it can take audio over the HDMI to output that. Um, the clever thing with this little five inch touchscreen display is that. It's a touchscreen display. So it actually has two power inputs. One I believe is for power. So I don't know if this is gonna focus very well, but you can see there it says power. Let's use the knife so you can see better. So it's saying power next to that one and touch next to that one. Um, so you can run two USBs to it to, to power both. And that's that. Now, I think that's quite cool. It feels quite substantial as well, actually. But the big thing here is that these little screens are quite readily available. This is what makes it quite unique, is the fact that they actually include, let's, uh, let's get this one open as well, this has just been shrink wrapped by the look of it. It includes a kind of 
put together yourself, self-assembly, bit of IKEA going on, um, little frame to actually keep the display inside. So if you're going to if you're going to put this on the side by your computer, it actually has better um, better kind of appearance than just having this screen uh, with the naked PCB on the back. Um, now for some that might work, and actually you could use that screen in another case mod to kind of find a way to fit it inside. Uh, but this video is, uh, is really all about the most simple way uh, of getting to that solution of having that secondary display. So let's get this fully unpacked and see what else we've got going on in here. So we've got loads of little pieces here. That appears to be some kind of stand that's going to fit together. And then this appears to be the housing that is going to sit on that display. Oh, it's perfect. Absolute perfect cut to size. Really, really good. Uh, yep, yeah, and all the HDMI and everything is still accessible in the back. So yeah, this is, this is quite interesting. So what I'm going to do now is off camera, I'm going to get this all put together and then we can start talking about how you can set this up and use it as that stats monitor. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, so the screen is all together, but before we start going through the process of getting that set up and working, I have an opportunity to tell you today about our video sponsor. Our video sponsor is actually me. Um, so we're launching today thatrandomgeekyguide.com. Um, it's a social hub, brings together all of our social channels, as well as has our brand new merch store. So please head on over there and check out the limited edition Founders Edition t-shirt if you want to support the channel and the future of these videos. So thank you very much. Let's continue with the video. Don't forget to check it out. Okay, so we're back and we are in POV style. So. This is my setup, all close up. Uh, anyway, uh, you'll notice this is my normal Acer Nitro 1440p 144 hertz monitor with loads of glare right there in the middle, so I do apologize. Um, but now, down to the left, let's just wait for the focus to adjust, there we go. We now have this new display, uh, and it's using some software from NZXT called NZXT Cam. I will put a link in the, in the video description, but I highly, highly recommend it as a good uh, kind of user interface for this specific setup. So you'll notice if we just move in a bit closer, um, the CPU, uh, you've got the load there, you've got the GPU load including, uh, well it says fan speed for the CPU, but it's actually the pump speed, uh, temperature, uh, clock speed, so this, uh, this Ryzen uh, 3600 is overclocked on all cores to 4.4 gigahertz. You've got GPU, same kind of stats with that as well. Uh, you've got RAM usage, uh, top programs at the moment, um, as well as storage. But all in all, it's, it's just a good, very quick overview of your system stats. And that's kind of was the idea of putting this together. You will notice there's a massive HDMI cable coming out the top. Um, I will need to get a, uh, a kind of a right angle, small HDMI cable to look this, make this look a bit neater. But on the whole, this, this is fantastic. I really, really like it. So how is it done? Let me show you. Okay, so we're back looking at my normal uh, daily driver monitor, which is the Acer Nitro. Um, I'm sure you've probably guessed already how this works, but very simply, I'm just going to go into display settings, and essentially we're set up with a dual monitor setup. So you've got the normal display here selected as number one, which is running at 2560 by 1440. That's my 144 hertz display that we're looking at this on. Uh, and then number two uh, is that second display. Um, so actually its native resolution is 1080, um, but the best resolution I found in terms of displaying the NZXT cam software the best is 1152 by 864 scaled to 125%. Uh, then all I'm doing is I'm opening that NZXT software, dragging across because obviously it's a, uh, if I was to drag this, you'll see, it's a multi-screen setup. Uh, and then when it's on the other screen, just pushing F11 to make it full screen. So that's it, we're all set up. You can see it's really, really simple. Um, I don't know why, but I thought to myself it was gonna be a really difficult project. For some reason, I got the impression that actually it was powered by a Raspberry Pi or something along those sort of lines, and it just doesn't need to be. If you want that second display to display those stats, it's a real simple process. So like I said, links to the model that I've bought is in the, in the video description. Obviously, you can find other models that come without the plastic display uh, surrounds and all those sort of bits and pieces if you just plan to mount it in a different way. 
Some of the stuff I've already seen online is people are mounting them inside the case, which I think is quite cool. Uh, the H510 case I've got is fairly small, so actually putting it into that wasn't really my kind of key option. Uh, but with that little plastic surround, it looks fantastic. Yeah, the HDMI cable that's in it looks horrific. Um, so I will be getting a right angle um, or even a 270 degree one that kind of dips right down the back um, so that I can actually uh, to route that cable so it's not quite so obvious. Um, but yeah, as a whole, it's, it was a really easy project. Um, I say, links will be in the description below. If you've got any comments, questions, stick it in the comment section below as well. All feedback is always welcome. So thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever it might be. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Uh, and I guess the final thing is, don't forget to head on over to that randomgeekyguy.com. Uh, check it out and also see uh, whether or not you can support the future of this channel through our merch and maybe invest in one of those Founder Edition t-shirts. Uh, thank you very much for joining me as ever guys. There's actually going to be another video this weekend so keep an eye out for that one as well. Take care.